Hey everyone, it's Intel here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to optimize your connection for MC. So there seems to be a lot of misinformation that's out there when it comes to your connection and MC and what actually works. I've dedicated this video solely to showing you guys what actually does make an impact on your connection. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a lot smoother and a lot more stable of a connection and hopefully that will help you in game. I also wanna say before this video starts that the server that I'm on is Rango. Uh, this is an upcoming practice server owned by Zena. The clips that you're gonna see are gonna be from Rango practice, but it's in beta, so nothing's finalized just yet. I just wanted to make that quick little announcement because I am going to be playing on here a lot when it comes out so be looking forward to that. Anyways with that being said let's get right into the video. Alright so I'm going to be splitting this video into two parts uh, stuff that you can do on the hardware side of things and stuff that you can do on the software side of things things that you can do on your PC itself. I'm going to start off with the hardware side of things because these are the things that are going to help you the most if you're trying to improve your connection. I'll also leave some timestamps in the description in case you just want to skip to all the software related stuff. Alright so the first thing that's going to help you tremendously if you're not actually already doing it is having ethernet and having ethernet will make a huge difference if you don't know what ethernet is it is a wired internet connection that you connect to between your router or modem directly to your pc an ethernet cord is super cheap you can pick one up for like ten dollars off of amazon a lot of people i talk to who don't use ethernet say that's the case because their router isn't near their pc or like they're playing upstairs while their router is downstairs or vice versa now for me personally my router is in the living room and i just have a really long Long ethernet cord that runs across the wall all the way to my bedroom and once again I just have it like lined up against the wall just so it isn't in the way or anything now if you aren't able to do that then there is still an alternative that will let you use ethernet no matter where you are in your house and that is called power line ethernet essentially what this allows you to do is run ethernet to, through the power lines of your house so you have one end of it that connects from your router to your nearest socket and then the other end you can connect to any other socket within your house and then directly to your PC now power line ethernet is a little pricey however once again, it's going to make a massive difference if you're not using Ethernet already, and I think it's 100% worth it if you can get it. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to be talking about is upgrading your internet, and I know what you guys are thinking. Well, obviously, I would if I could, right? However, there might be a way for you to get an internet upgrade 100% free. So depending on where you live and what ISP you have, a lot of ISPs will tend to overcharge their customers or charge them with outdated internet plans. So this was the case for me when I lived in Kentucky, and our internet really sucked there, so we called up our ISP, and it actually turned turned out that they had been billing us an outdated internet plan and we weren't getting the speeds that we were supposed to be getting. So after we called them, they sent a guy over to our house 100% free of charge and had them upgrade our internet and it was basically twice the speeds for completely free. Now I know obviously this isn't going to be the case for everyone, but I really do think it's going to be worth your time just calling up with your ISP and double checking with them. Just ask them if they have any better plans for what you're paying for right now and who knows, they might be able to give you a free upgrade like they did for me. And if you feel like your internet is slow, you can also ask them if there are any problems with it and they'll look and they'll diagnose any problems that your internet may be having so you might be able to get a speed boost that way too. The last thing I want to mention hardware wise and this should be pretty self-explanatory is that if there are any other devices connected to the internet that are using bandwidth then you might want to turn those off because they might be throttling your connection on your PC. Alright so now I'm going to be going over the software side of things and there's a lot to cover here. Alright so Minecraft itself isn't really that well optimized when it comes to your connection and back in the day we used to use a forge mod called TCP no delay uh, to fix that and you can still look that mod up that's still a thing made by purples but nowadays we have these clients so right here I have lunar client and bad line client and both of these already have a bunch of connection optimizations pre-built into them so you don't need to worry about doing anything yourself I think there's a few other clients like PVP launch client that has some built-in connection optimizations to it but lunar client and bad line client are the main two ones that I see so while you're playing you still might have a few things that are hogging your internet resources and to be able to check that, you want to right click on your taskbar and click on task manager. And then you want to scroll down this list and see anything that's taking up your network. So these will be things like Discord, Spotify, Google Chrome, just anything in the background that's using internet. If you have really poor internet to start with, then you don't want a lot of things using your network. So you want to limit that as much as possible. So close out everything you aren't using by right clicking it and click end task. You can also disable certain things from starting up with your PC if you just go to the startup tab and you right 
right click it and click on disable. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be showing you guys is this program called NetLimiter. And you only really wanna be using this program if you're having a lot of connection issues with MC. So basically what this program allows you to do is it lets you set the priority at which you want certain apps to take up bandwidth on your PC. So once you have NetLimiter, which I'll leave down in the description, you wanna have your MC open. And then from there, you wanna look for Java TM platform SE binary in the list. You want to right click it and then you want to click on add rule. Find where it says rule type and then select the drop down and hit priority. And then down where it says priority, you wanna select the drop down and select critical. So basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna reserve most of your bandwidth for MC. However, it's gonna make it really difficult for other applications to pr properly utilize their own bandwidth. So for example, if you're also in Discord, then you're probably gonna be a lot more laggy if you have NetLimiter on. And the same thing applies if you're trying to watch videos on the side, then it's probably gonna be a lot more laggy. And that's just because all of your bandwidth is reserved for Minecraft only. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys are some regedit tweaks that you can do. So uh, I wanna put a clear disclaimer on this. There has been so much misinformation that has been spread with regedit and uh, a lot of people try to sell regedit. It's, uh, it's honestly gotten like a pretty bad rep. And that's because people try to advertise it as something that's going to make you a better player without a doubt, uh, is gonna make you get faster hits, a lower knockback, all, all this other random bull crap. That isn't what I'm trying to advertise at all because there is a lot of things that you can do in your registry settings that will help optimize your connection. Now, before you even think about doing any changes to your registry, you wanna back it up first. To do that, you wanna hold your Windows key and press R on your keyboard, and then you want to type in regedit. Once you have this open, you wanna click on file in the top left, and you want to click on export. Name it as whatever, I'll just name mine as backup and I'm gonna click on save. And as you can see, it saved a registry file called backup on my desktop. And basically all I have to do to apply this is I just have to run it. So in case something goes wrong with the settings I'm about to give you, you always have a backup to revert to. So I will leave this little regedit file in the description. All you have to do is run it, but if you wanna know what's on it, all you have to do is you right click it, you click edit, you click run. And these are all the things that is modifying. If you really want to, you can look into all these different values just by looking them up on your own. Most of these settings are just general optimization tweaks that are going to be applying to your registry. Uh, once again, if you create a backup, then you have nothing to worry about when applying this. But yeah, once again, I'll have this in the description. All you have to do is download it and run the file and then restart your PC for them to take effect. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to change your DNS server. So what you want to do is you want to go to the bottom right of your PC. You want to right click whatever your internet icon is and click on open network and internet settings. From here, you want to scroll down and you want to click on change adapter options. So from here, you want to find whatever connection you're using. For me, that is Ethernet 2. You want to right click on that and then you want to click on properties. Now from here, you want to find internet protocol version 4 and then you want to click on properties once again. Once you have this open, you want to click on use the following DNS server addresses. So I recommend either using Cloudflare's DNS server or Google's DNS server. I'll leave both of them down in the description, but for this example, I'm going to be using Cloudflare's DNS server. And all you need to do to get that is type in preferred DNS server 1.1.1.1 and then alternate DNS server 1.0.0.1 and click OK. All right, so the last thing I want to go over is flushing your DNS servers, and this may help a lot depending on when the last time you did it was. So what you want to do is you want to hold your Windows key and press R on your keyboard and you get the little run box and you want to type in CMD. All right, so from here, it's pretty simple. All you want to do is type in ipconfig space slash flush DNS. And I'll have this in the description if you just want to copy paste it then but then you want to click on enter and then from there you're done you have successfully flushed your dns resolver cache and there you guys go those are all the tips that i have for improving your connection within minecraft i know that was a lot so if you guys have any questions please ask in the comments uh, and i'll try to get to as many people as possible if you guys are still having connection issues even after this guide then i hate to break it to you but your, your internet probably isn't too great and there's not too much that you can do but with that being said thank you guys so much for watching uh thank you for 6k subs because we did reach out recently and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out